Hi everybody, welcome to Now What with Brit and Sean. I'm Sean. And I'm Brit. On our channel for grades K to 6, we learn new things and have some fun. Woohoo! And what are we going to learn today, Brit? Today, we're going to learn all about jellyfish. You know what a jellyfish is, right Sean? Sean? You still there? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I know what jellyfish are. They're squishy, and they look like shower caps with noodles hanging off of them. Mm, well, there's more to know about jellyfish than just that. Like what? Jellyfish have been around for millions of years, even before dinosaurs lived on the Earth. Some jellyfish are clear, while others are vibrant colors, like yellow, pink, blue, and purple. They can be bioluminescent too, which means they can produce their own light. Jellyfish have no brain, heart, bones, or eyes, but they do have a mouth at the center of their body that they use to eat food as well as to remove food waste. They also squirt water out of their mouths to help them propel forward. Wait a second. So you're telling me that jellyfish are basically just giant mouths? Jellyfish are made up of a smooth, bag-like body and tentacles with tiny stinging cells that they use to ward off predators as well as to paralyze their prey before eating them up. Jellyfish stings can be painful to humans, and from certain species, they can even be deadly. Although jellyfish don't purposely attack humans, most stings occur when people accidentally touch jellyfish. Wow, jellyfish are fascinating creatures. I wish we could see them up close. It's too bad that they can hurt us. Well, there is a place we can go where the jellyfish can hurt us. Where? I'll show you. Hold your breath. Here we are at the incredible Jellyfish Lake, which is located in Elkmalk Island in Palau, Micronesia. As you can see, there are thousands of golden jellyfish swimming around us. Wow, they're incredible. But how do you know they can't hurt us? These jellyfish evolved without stinging cells because there are no predators in the lake. Since they feed on algae, they don't need stingers to catch prey either. How did they evolve this way? That's a great question. Jellyfish Lake is about 12,000 years old. During the last ice age, the sea levels rose to the point where seawater began to fill the basin. When the glaciers receded, there was no place else for the jellyfish to go. This allowed them to evolve in their own unique way. Wow, this lake is amazing. But I'm getting a little bit of a foot cramp from all this swimming. Let's go back. Okay. Swimming with the jellyfish was super relaxing. I agree. I wish there was a way we could relax with jellyfish anytime. There is. How? I'll show you. For this activity, you're going to need some water, a clear plastic bottle. It doesn't have to look like this. It can be a soda bottle or a water bottle a glass, some tooth floss or some thin thread, some food coloring, I chose blue because it kind of looks like water, scissors, some permanent markers, various colors, a thin plastic bag. The one I'm using are ones that you get from bagging uh, vegetables. These work really well for this activity. And some white labels. The first thing we're going to do is cut out a square from the plastic bag that we have. Next, we're going to draw a circle, not a large circle, but a smaller circle in the middle of our plastic bag. And now we're going to jazz up our jellyfish. We're going to add a bunch of colors and stuff so when it's in the, in the bottle, it'll actually look really vibrant. So I'm going to add some green, and I'm just going to make some, some squiggly lines going out, kind of like, looks like kind of like a sun. The idea is that when I'm cutting the plastic bag later, 
these will be on my tentacles. And I think I'll also add some gold. to color the body a nice silver. So after we've designed our jellyfish, we're going to take the plastic bag and we're going to place the circle that we drew over top of the mouth of the glass because it's going to help us to pour the water in that's going to make the body of our jellyfish. So we're just going to pour a little bit in. We don't want to pour too much. We want to pour enough that there is a body, but if we pour too much, then the jellyfish will actually not fit into the mouth of the bottle. Take the sides of the plastic bag now, and we're going to pull them up and then twist. So you have a little ball of water here, and we're going to twist so there's kind of like a little bit of a seal. I mean, the seal will not be perfect, but it will hold the water in a little bit. Now, once you have twisted the, the water ball, you're going to take some tooth floss or some thread, and you're going to tie a few knots around the area of the plastic that you twisted. You can always get someone to help you out. So we're just tying around. And like I said, I'm going to do probably two or three knots just to make sure that the tooth floss or string is nicely secure and that we can minimize the amount of water that will leak out. Once we have tied the string around, we're going to cut off the excess string. And then we're going to cut a little bit of the plastic bag at the bottom off, kind of make it a little bit even. And then we're going to cut strips into the bottom of the bag which are going to become our jellyfish's tentacles. Now when you're cutting, make sure you don't go too far. You don't want to cut all the way up to the string and cut off the string, which is actually holding the water inside. And you also obviously don't want to puncture the plastic that is holding the water as well. Got some tentacles. There we go, there's our jellyfish. For the next step, we are going to pour some water into our plastic bottle. And we want to pour maybe three quarters of the way. And then we're going to add some food coloring. I would suggest using one drop at first um, because if you actually put too much food coloring in, the water will become too dark and you will not be able to see your jellyfish. So I'm going to put one drop for now and if I think it's too light I can always add a little bit later. And we're going to put the cap on. We are going to mix. And there we kind of have something that looks a little bit like a blue ocean. Now we're going to place our jellyfish inside and see how I mentioned before, you don't want to put too much water in because you want to make sure that it does enter the neck of the bottle and ours is actually a really good size so it does fit. And then you're going to fill the rest of the bottle up with water. And as you notice, we actually use the right amount of food coloring. It's not too dark so we can still see our jellyfish. So like I said, one drop is usually okay. And if you want to add some at this point right now, you could. 
but once you put too much in at the beginning, you can't change it unless you change the water out. And we're sealing the top back on, and here is your jellyfish. As he floats to the top. So next we're going to jazz up our jellyfish environment by adding some, maybe some coral or some seaweed to the side of the bottle. So that way when our jellyfish is inside, it kind of looks more like a habitat that they might live in. So I'm gonna draw some seaweed. And then I'm gonna cut the labels out. And there we have our jellyfish in a bottle. That was awesome. I made one too. Cool. Can I see it? Sure. I used a larger juice bottle and I made my water purple. That looks awesome. Now what? If you want to learn more about Jellyfish and Jellyfish Lake, look in the description below the video for links to more resources. If you had fun with us today, remember to like the video and subscribe to our channel so we can have more fun together. See, See you next time! time.